My name is Thomas Howard. Sorry. I'm going to present that. Uh -huh. So, so, yeah. Yeah, don't be honest. <laughs> no, don't be honest. It's got no structural integrity. I enjoy installing Fedora on things. I previously used Zonebinder for work purposes at a previous business, not like not the business I currently work on. Uh, I like making things using PHP, and I like leaving EC Linux on for some reason. And in this talk, I'm going to basically go over Motion, which is a, um, and then Zonebinder, and then a little bit about integrating it with Home Assistant. So. Motion and Zonebinder are open source CCTV applications. You basically get a video source, it'd be your, whether it be a webcam, uh, IP cams, one of those PCI, car, PCI cards with a whole bunch of video inputs. You put this in the computer, uh, you plug it into the application, it detects motion, and hopefully saves the motion to a drive, hope contacts you about it if you set it up right. Uh, USB webcams generally the cheapest way of setting this up. Well, I'll use them. And pack. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> sorry, I'm nervous and not done a talk to in front of so many people before. I should have given you more alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> but too not too much alcohol. Yeah, don't do a kitty con. No. <laughs> So yeah, obviously at work much of the day, I like being able to see who's been by my house um, when I'm not at home, that the package I'm been expecting is delivered, if somebody's run away with the package, uh, if somebody's coming around and knocked on the door to say, sell me religion or electricity or something of the sort. If you're a flip customer, it's about the same, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have computers sitting around, and I've got webcams for cheap, so why not set this up? And that is the camera. I bought that for, I think it was 16 bucks at cash converters. If you buy that new, it's actually worth 10 times that, so it was a massive bargain. And this one will do 1080p at 30 frames a second, so you need kind of a decent amount of processing power to actually deal with that. So on the ones behind glass, do you, do you get much reflection? Ah, uh, hold on, let's go back to that. Sorry about this. No, it's just lots of presenting on the top right. Top right. That wasn't it. Oh, ah, yeah, I see. It wasn't matching before. Oh, maybe it's hung on the Mac. Or you a different screen going. Oh. Let's try this again with the present button. I may need to switch to your Mac talking. Mm. Not really just machine. Yeah, let me close that. And yeah, relaunch. <coughs> Dubious third party <laughs> ear place server. <laughs> yeah, can you re should try reconnecting to the earplug? Cool. Do that. Or Chromecast, is it? Would be called by that particular vendor? No. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So I was just asking Tom, that glass, does it cause much reflection back on the camera? Uh, no, it actually doesn't, unless the LEDs are glowing on it. Okay. I used to cover them with electrical tape, but I found another way of turning them off. Otherwise, you, as it's constantly recording from the camera, the lights glow blue, this reflects off the thing, particularly in dim conditions, and it blinds itself, which is not what you want. Uh, it's just hold, held on with a wooden frame and command strips, and the flat tape is to stop UV light from wrecking the command strips. <laughs> <laughs> the previous iteration fell off when I bumped it ever so slightly due to that. What's it like low light? Um, Till about doesn't work very well when it's actually properly dark and sort of dim conditions. This adjusts a little bit so that you can. It's adjust somehow manages to adjust itself in such a way that you can't actually perceive it until it really gets too dark and then it quickly slumps into uselessness. 
overnight it will occasionally pick up people driving around those because of the light from the cars. Okay. okay, so first thing in this software I'm going to talk about is motion, which uh, it's basically natively comes with no front end, it sort of runs as a service on a Linux box, you configure it using a text file, uh, you can also use it to you provide a motion JPEG stream to something else, which is quite a good use for it sometimes. And the advantages of motion, uh, well it is fairly lightweight, it doesn't require quite so much processing power as zone minder tends to, uh, it doesn't require a whole lot of other things like an Apache server or a MySQL server, and you can run it on things that aren't Linux, like you can run it on um, BSD and OS X, uh, for on OS X you can't use webcams, but you have to use network cameras. And the disadvantage is it uh, hasn't got um, wonderful motion detection. I was previously using it at home, and I'd find that a cloud would cover the sun and it would go off due to that, or various other things. Um, I got lots of false alarms. Do you think the commercial products aren't that good either? Like, uh, the ubiquity unify cameras do that all the time as well. Okay. Like, oh, the light chain, the default is in motion. It's like mm. not the most intelligent stuff. And that grayscale image is a uh, pixmap file used to define sensitivity zones. So all the black areas on that are areas that I'm just not interested in. It's uh, the road and so forth. The grayscale areas are where I was trying to get to be a little bit less sensitive to light changes and so forth, and yeah, the areas of the areas that I'm more interested in motion. I'm not entirely sure that the grayscale bits actually reduced the sensitivity, but it was worth trying anyway. I couldn't perceive the difference. I basically got an image of the um, what the camera was picking up. Put it into the GIMP, drew, over, drew on another layer over it to cover up the areas I didn't want to see, and then use that to export it in the right format for motion. And then put it in the right folder on the server, pointed it at it, and yeah. And someone actually has made a front end for motion eye, I mean, for motion called motion eye, you can get it from this URL here. You can also use motion eye OS. I, not try these things. At some point, I might try them. It looks promising though. And basically, quick recipe for it is that the config looks like this. I don't think that's particularly reasonable. Oh, that's <laughs> <not good. laughs> but, oh well. What is it like? Zoom right in on the recording. <laughs> if you open it and then you'll see something like that, but closer up. This big section. Right here with the mouse is where you select the pixel formats for, for it to use. Uh, what have I got here? <laughs> so, is it like YAML or any file or uh, standard config file? Yeah. Like standard Linux config file. Yeah, what are the basic configuration options? Pardon? What are the basic configuration options? Uh, inputs for the various cameras and so forth. You can configure some stuff about what you want. Like, um, uh, some details about sensitivity in it. Uh, you can configure a web, where it saves images, if it saves, uh, yeah, if it saves um, videos as well, how it saves videos using Epic MPEG or some other process, and there's a whole lot of other um, config there too. Yeah. Next thing I'm going to talk about is ZoneMinder, which is a PHP, Perl, and I believe C application, which uh, basically does the same sorts of things as Motion, but provides a user interface. Yeah. Uh, the of this is it's uh, very flexible and very full features. There's a huge depth for features in it. I've not explored them all. Yeah. I've got and com. Compared to motion, it's got quite good motion detection. I've had hardly any false alarms with it. When it goes off, it's generally because I'm leaving the house or coming home or somebody's on the deck at home. 
and you most, mostly configure it using a web interface. There's a little bit of config right at the beginning to set up with the database um, credentials and all that. And the disadvantages are it only runs on Linux. Uh, it requires a reasonably quick computer. You should be able to get away with sort of a core two era processor. You're probably not going to have a lot of luck with a Raspberry Pi, unfortunately. Atom? Uh, my luck. Newer atoms might be okay. I remember trying it on one of the first atoms and it just didn't work very well. <laughs> It can be a little bit fragile. Uh, I've had issues with updating it recently where uh, the updates of the pipe can go rid of all the previous events that it's captured, or currently with each update, I actually have to run an update script up that the database it's not done automatically. Also, a little bit frustrating. There's another issue recently to do. I have there was a bug in a relatively recent version where if you deleted all the previously captured events, it would stop capturing new ones until you restarted the application. And I would not leave this open to the internet. It, and the default config comes with no authentication on it. Even once you add authentication, I still wouldn't trust the security of it that much to leave it open to everyone. And the recipe is basically this somewhat fast computer. You do need a MySQL server, you need an Apache server, you need Perl, um, not PHP, Perl, cameras, and a text editor. And hopefully from that point, away you go. Uh, what was it for V4L? Video for Linux. Oh. So that's the standard for plugging webcams into your Linux machine or plugging uh, enough sort of video capture device to expose this as a video for Linux device. Basically, point at slash dev slash video o or one or two. Yeah. It can have issues with webcams with enumerating them in a sensible order between restarts. And yes, you basically install it from, say, the Ubuntu repository or if you're using Fedora, RPM Fusion. Uh, Set it up, I'll set up the database server, set up the Apache server, set the config up here, and away you go. And it looks like that. So this is the um, camera front of house, this is the living room one. I'll hopefully do a demo soon. <coughs> These are the amount of events it's captured. I generally delete them pretty much often. I'll config up here. The, and zones here. And zones are... Uh, you basically draw a line around the area that you want to capture motion in. It uh, ignores this area up here, but you can also set up zones that will specifically ignore things or specifically block out areas. And yes, that's basically it in fact. And you can integrate it with Home Assistant. Uh, it provides for um, displaying cameras in Home Assistant and also switching a particular cameras on and off, so if you, sorry, too used to using the back button. Have you got the option again to present it? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, let's recast it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sweet. Sorry about that. Oh, oh, crashed again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Very serious. Yeah. Was it? Was that one cast with them? Let's try this. I'll restart you through. Yeah, yeah, send them all time. <coughs> right, back to here. So these are particular cameras in my house, as I said before. You can um, 
basically switch them between motion detection here or <coughs> just monitoring something and the, there's a bunch of other sen settings in there too. <laughs> and it's done for you. So I'll just do the uh, try and test it turn it off and on again. First person who makes a service that can do Chromecast and AirPlay reliably will get a large amount of money. Fuck from anyone, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone's a better use of shit. Um, all right, there we the go. dojo's got boxes to do it. No, What's that? The dojo's got, the dojo's got boxes to plug into TVs to do it. Do it? Yeah. Plug us again, mate. Okay, just turn back to the TV. Cool. No. But if you one of the boxes is made by the vendors to make this, which is not a ring endorsement. <laughs> and now for a very short, quickly, what will be a live demonstration. So, so don't close your tablet to casting. Okay. Make sure you leave that one open. Cool. Balance, safety, balance. And how can we... Did you cast from the app or from Chrome? Cast it from Chrome. Um. Hmm. <coughs> How about the close there? Close that one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ah. <coughs> hey! Well, we're two, but. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> 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 I don't know why we've got two, but. It's tough right now. Will you be handing out glasses? <laughs> Probably one. Just try stopping it for a second and just resume it. Alright, so we're none. Try get some room between two and none. Hey! Excellent. Okay, Jim, how am I supposed to make some deletion room one? So, this is a live feed of contents of my house right now. It is fortunately yeah. light enough that it can actually see something though. Where's the cat? <laughs> I have no cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see. So you can keep a montage view here. See all your cameras. And you get two. Yeah. I thought the deck was red. <laughs> so Tom, I presume it shows like recording history and yep. sort of stuff. Can Go you like scrub through time? Like Hold on. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Some of them open and pop up, some of them don't. <laughs> I was trying to get to the um, area to configure zones and that opens in a pop-up, but as of a relatively recent version, this uh, actually opens in a, the same window, which is nice. And that was me from <laughs> quite a few days ago. Slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like and yes. Hopefully that. Yeah. Cool. Yes, I'll well, thank you for that. Questions? Well, uh, I just, the, you omitted the pot plant in your zone. Yes. Uh, was that full wind? I used to have a whole lot of weeds in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> weeds, and that was growing and so, so, so fast that it was triggering bubbles. <laughs> waving around the wind, oh, and good. yeah, that, I thought that might trigger it, so that's why I drew a big line around it, so that if anything moves there. It's so actually got in a concrete, my whole garden painted green, because I wasn't worried about cameras. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's actually got a walnut tree growing in here, so that's why I um, sometimes I put the twig and it's actually got leaves and walnut currently. So if I reach over, I can steal your walnut. Without seeing your walnut. Yeah. This so, is a bonsai. So, Tom, I'm puzzling over you. You sort of describe motion and seem reasonably sensible and simple. Yes. And then this one zone might be just seems ridiculously complicated. Yeah. Was it? No, you know, a huge amount of other stuff, and yet that seems to be the one you're using. Yeah. Yes, I would go down a complicated path. Uh, well, it's, or is it better? The, um, it is better for motion right. detection in Zone Minder. Is does seem to be much better uh, as having lots and lots of false alarms all the time from clouds and so forth. 